Hello everyone and welcome to the Winecast. This cast will be about Bordeaux, and because there's a lot about Bordeaux to cover, I'll be breaking it into two parts. Part one will be about getting you the lay of the land, as well as some information about the kinds of wines that Bordeaux produces. In part two, we'll talk about some of the classification systems that are out there exclusively for Bordeaux wines, including one very famous one, the 1855 classification. In this cast, and in part two, we'll be using terms related to French wine appellations like AOC and IGP. And if those terms aren't familiar to you, feel free to take a look at the cast on French wine quality classification for a quick primer or brush up, as the case may be. So let's get started by talking about the geography of Bordeaux. Here's a map showing where Bordeaux is located in France. You can see it in the upper right hand corner, and then a larger map showing the whole Bordeaux AOC with its various sub AOCs. The most important geographical features to start with are the three rivers that flow through the area. The Dordogne, the Garonne, and the Gironde, which is really more of an estuary that both the other rivers flow into, and then it flows into the Atlantic Ocean. If you're traveling down the Dordogne River toward the ocean, the area to your right is called the Right Bank. And if you've heard about Right Bank Bordeaux wines, what people mean when they use that term is that the wine came from this area. Though in practice, they're probably referring to a wine that came from a small part of this region around the city of Le Bourne, which is this dot over here. And they're referring to wine coming from this patchwork of Appalachians that surround that city. If you're headed down the Garonne and also the Gironde, then the area to your left is called the Left Bank, and that's where Left Bank wines come from. Both the right and left banks are known primarily for their dry red wines, and that's usually what people have in mind when they talk about a left or right bank wine. However, the southern half of the left bank is also known as a producer of quality dry white wines and of some very famous sweet white wines. So what about the area between the two banks? This wedge-shaped area is called entre du mer, which means between two seas. That's kind of odd because if it's between two of anything, it's between two rivers and not seas. Well, go fig, I suppose. Entre du Mer has a low elevation relative to the two banks and lots of fertile soil, and both of those conditions aren't usually considered particularly good for producing quality wine. And Entre du Mer is generally not highly regarded for its production of red wines, though it has some areas that can produce good quality dry and sweet white wines. Let's get back to the left bank for a bit. It can be subdivided into two areas. Let's start with the northern one called the Medoc. That whole area can be split in half as well. The most important part of this area is the part represented in pink and by the number two, as well as all of the little sub-appellations that are lying on top of it. This is the Haut Medoc, or the Upper Medoc, because of its high elevation relative to the regular Medoc, represented by the number one. As you can see, the Omedoc is divided into smaller village or communal appellations, numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and being from any of these appellations generally gives wine a bump in quality, as opposed to being classified as just a wine from the Omedoc. This is red wine country, and all of the appellations that this area is subdivided into are geared toward producing red wines. White wine can be produced here, but if it is, it can't be awarded anything more prestigious than the basic Bordeaux AOC appellation. If we go down a little to just south of the city of Bordeaux, we'll find the next major area that the left bank is divided into, Grave. Definitely say Grave and not Graves, and as a way to remember the pronunciation, just know that the name refers to the gravelly soils in the area. Grave is known for its reds and dry whites, and there's a sub-area of Grave called Pesac Leonian that's especially well regarded when it comes to both of these wine styles. Pesac Leonian is a relatively new appellation. It was created in 1987 when the most renowned producers in Grave, who all happened to be from the northern part of this area, wanted their own appellation to distinguish themselves from what they perceived to be lesser quality producers in the south. So broadly speaking, a red or white wine with Pesac Leonian on the label versus Grave on the label is seen as a move up the quality scale, not down. At the south end of Grave are three appellations that are designated to produce sweet white wines. Going from number 35 to number 37, they are Ceron, Barsac, and Sauterne. And of the three, Barsac and Sauterne, numbers 36 and 37, are the most highly regarded. 
Moving over to the right bank, the area with probably the best reputation for quality is the appellation of Saint-Emilion and its satellite appellations that usually have Saint-Emilion in their name. Nearby are two other areas known for quality, Pomerol and Fronsac. All three of these areas are almost exclusively red wine producing areas. So what's in that bottle of Bordeaux you just bought? Well, if it's a red, then some combination of as many as six possible grapes. Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, Petit Verdot, and very rarely anymore, a grape called Carmenere. Carmenere was more common in Bordeaux blends during the 19th century, but when phylloxera, an aphid that caused massive damage to grapevines, struck this area, producers had to pull up their vines and then decide what varietals they were going to replant. Carmenere didn't do so well in this process, with many producers deciding that they didn't need it to create the blends they were looking for. Speaking of blends, that's really what you're getting when you buy a Bordeaux. Unlike in the U.S., where wines tend to get marketed as single varietal productions, such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Chardonnay, blending two or more grapes is the order of the day throughout much of France and Europe. What you're also most likely going to get is a red, with red wine making up just shy of 90% of Bordeaux's total production. If you do get a white, it'll likely be some combination of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon, with the possibility of a few other varieties as well. Whites make up around 10% of total Bordeaux production, with the remaining couple of percents taken up by rosés and sparkling wines, which are called Cremant. On the left bank, Cabernet Sauvignon is the dominant grape in blends, while on the right bank, blends tend to be driven by Merlot. Overall, Merlot is a bigger player than Cab Sauv, though, with blends from the right bank sometimes having as much as 85% or more Merlot, and then adding some Cabernet Franc and then maybe a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. By contrast, though reds on the left bank tend to feature a majority of Cab Sauv, it's rare to see a right bank red with as much as 75% of the blend being Cabernet Sauvignon, and then the next largest blending partner will usually be Merlot. Dry Bordeaux whites are driven by Sauve Blanc, with a few of them having 100% of that grape, but many having some Semillon as well, and a few other varietals. That equation is flipped for the sweet wines. So let's call it a day for part one of this cast, and in part two, we can talk about the different ways that some Bordeaux producers are classified apart from the AOC system, including the famous classification of 1855. That cast will be up shortly, so be on the lookout for it, or better yet, subscribe. Please leave a comment or like if you enjoyed this cast or found it helpful. I'd really love to hear from you. I'm the Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.